All right, welcome to this hands-on coding session for .NET Core. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating a data service that can be shared amongst five different .NET UI frameworks. We're gonna share the same data service with a WPF app, with an ASP.NET Core MVC implementation, and an ASP.NET Core Razor page implementation. And then we'll be looking at Blazor. We'll do Blazor server side and Blazor client side. And the UI we're gonna be creating is really simple. It's just gonna be one page, and we're gonna have a date picker and a button and a data grid. And when the user puts in a date and clicks a button, they'll get a filtered list of objects from our data service to show up in the data grid. And we'll build it in those five different frameworks. There's a lot to learn from this uh, hands-on workshop. We'll be using Entity Framework Core um, I'm going to configure it for SQLite and we're going to seed the database so the database won't exist, but you'll be able to run this and it'll create it if it doesn't exist and seed it with some sample data. <clears throat> and we're going to implement dependency injection in the various environments using the now built in dependency injection in .NET Core. And we're going to have to tackle CORS, cross, or cross origin resource sharing, uh, when we get to the Blazor client. And we'll learn about other things also, data binding in Blazor and model binding in ASP.NET MVC and passing parameters to controller methods and all kinds of things like that to make these frameworks work together and share this data service. So let's get started. I've got a completely empty Visual Studio preview. You're gonna have to use preview because we're doing um, Blazor client side WebAssembly. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit file new and I'm going to create, it doesn't really matter which project I create first, but I'm going to go ahead and create the WPF, WPF project first. And I want to make sure I pick .NET Core, not the full framework. And I'm going to name this multiui.wpf. And I'm just going to name this solution multiui. So we'll let that create, and then after that's done, we'll go ahead and create our ASP.NET Core uh, project. And what we're gonna do with that one, excuse me, let me go up to the solution and add project. <clears throat> and search for the ASP.NET Core template. So we want a web application in C Sharp. And what we're going to do with this one is we're going to name it multi UI and we're going to combine um, MVC and razor pages in the same ASP.NET Core app. So I'm going to name this multi UI dot MVC razor. And unfortunately there's not a template that includes both razor pages. This one has razor pages and this one has MVC. There's not a template that includes both. I'm just gonna pick the MVC and then we'll have to manually configure that project to support Razor Pages. <clears throat> okay, we have our ASP.NET MVC Razor and our WPF. Let's go ahead and add our Blazor projects. So I'll go ahead and do a add new project, Blazor, and we'll name this one multi UI dot blazer server <clears throat> and we'll let it create that and then we'll create the client client side blazer that is in C sharp and we'll name this one multi UI dot blazer client and if we hit create, we'll see we have a template for the web assembly, and that's what we're going to do. Now, there's op this option here for ASP.NET Core hosted. We are going to use uh, ASP.NET Core for providing data to the client side, but I'm going to use the project that we just created, the MVC Razor project, rather than creating a separate server project for our client side Blazor. And that's actually going to make things difficult. We're going to have to deal with CORS and um, sending um, parameters into a controller to get data from the client-side Blazor, but we'll get through it. So we'll create this one, 
And let's see, I think we have all of our UI covered. There's four projects here and we're gonna do two of the UIs in this one. So we have our five UIs. Now let's go ahead and deal with our data layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new project and I'm gonna do two class libraries. The first one I want to be uh, .NET Standard. And the reason I want .NET Standard for this one is that this one's gonna be shared with all of the projects, including client-side Blazor. And if we use .NET Standard, then that'll work just fine. So I'll name this one multiui.dataobjects. And one more project. And on this one, we want a class library that is .NET Core because we're going to use this one to set up our entity framework routines. So C sharp looks good. And we'll name this multi UI dot data service. <clears throat> okay, let me just make sure that this all builds because we have a lot of projects going on here with different target frameworks. So let's make sure we don't have any new get issues or anything like that. Okay, and it looks like we're good. So let's go ahead and start working on our data objects and our data service. Now our data objects gonna be really simple. I'm only gonna create one entity in here. And <clears throat> the entity that I'm gonna create is going to be called a ledger item. And this is just a proof of concept. We're trying to create something simple here. If this were a real project, you would have a lot of data objects, but we're just gonna create one for the sake of time. And these will be entity framework entities. So we're gonna create it as if it's going to match um, mapping to a relational table. So let's go ahead and do a public int ID property. A public string description. And then we're gonna need a date because we're gonna use that. Uh, like I said, in our UI, we're gonna let the user filter by date. So we'll do uh, date time and we'll call it transaction date. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and add an amount. And that'll be it. And we use decimal. Okay, nice and simple. If, if this were the real world, we'd have data annotations. We'd have a lot more entities in here, but proof of concept, this is just fine. Let's move on to our data service now. And what we're gonna do for our data service is we're gonna set up entity framework. So um, I'm gonna create three classes here. I wanna create a class for the context. So let me go ahead and do that. Uh, let me get rid of this generated class first. Okay, so I'll add a new item, a class, <clears throat> and I'll call this multi UI data context. We're gonna wanna have a data service. And then last, I'm gonna create a little helper class to seed our data. So we'll add one more class to seed data. <clears throat> okay, and let's go ahead and start with the context. And what we're gonna to wanna to do here is gonna make this publicly accessible because we're gonna have other DLLs that wanna access it. And then this is going to be an entity framework DB context. So I'm gonna use um, some help from Visual Studio to actually add the NuGet package for me. And this is the one we want here, microsoft.entityframework.core. So I'll go ahead and allow Visual Studio to take care of that. <clears throat> and then we have our context. Now this context is gonna be really simple. We only have one entity, so we just need to give access to that as a DB set. 
and our data type was ledger item. We'll need a using, and actually we need a reference, and Visual Studio take care of both of those for us. And then we'll name this ledger items. <clears throat> okay, and uh, that's really it for our context um, as far as data goes. Uh, again, if this were real world, we'd have dozens, maybe even hundreds of DB sets that would be mapped to real tables. But uh, let me go ahead and set this up for SQLite. So we do that by overriding the onConfiguring method from the base class of the DB context. <clears throat> And we're going to tap into the options builder that's passed in as a parameter. And we're going to tell it to use SQL light. SQL light. And the string you pass in is basically the connection string that tells it where the database is going to be located. <clears throat> now, I don't think Visual Studio will resolve this for me, so going to have to manually go install this package. So we'll do that now. Under the data service, we'll go to manage NuGet packages and we will search for Entity Framework SQLite. <clears throat> and we make sure we get the Entity Framework core version of SQLite. And I had problems with the pre-release, so I'm going to make sure we use stable. So back to our context, uh, that lights up now, so that's great. And for simplicity, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hard code a path here. Um, obviously, you wouldn't do this if this were any kind of production, <coughs> excuse me, type of an application. But um, I just want to keep this simple. And I'm just going to say data source equals. And I'm going to hard code C. SQL light data and multi UI dot DB. So I have a folder on my C drive created um, to store this data and it's empty right now, but we're going to create that database and seed it with sample data. And that should be all we need. So our data context is configured. Let's go ahead and create a simple data service that will utilize it. Now, I'm going to be doing a lot of dependency injection in this uh, hands-on, but I'm not going to use dependency injection here because um, we're going to get plenty of it. <laughs> so all I'm going to do here is uh, create a, a manually created instance of the context. So I'll create a reference for my multi UI data context, a private backing field, and I'll just call it context. And then in the constructor, I'll just create an instance. Okay. <clears throat> and then our data service is only going to feed us uh, one version of our entities, we only have one entity to work with. We're only going to do one type of filtering, and that's going to be a method to give us an IE numerable of our ledger items with optional filtering by date. So let me resolve this, and we'll just call this get ledger items, and then we'll have a parameter of a nullable date time called date filter. <clears throat> so the way this is going to work is if the date filter is null, then we'll return the, the complete collection. Uh, let's see, context uh, ledger items. And we don't want to return the DB set. We want to return this as a list. So I'm going to say to list and then add link. And if the date filter is not null, then we're going to want to return a filtered set. So I'll just copy that line. And then we'll use link to filter this. 
x goes to x dot transaction date equals date filter. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I think we're good. So we have our data service now. It's simple. We have our data objects. Um, now we need to do something to create an instance of this and to seed our database. So let's go ahead and write our little helper to do the seeding, and then we'll figure out how we're going to host it and invoke it. So um, the seeding of the data, I'm just going to use a static class. And we'll create one static method, and we'll just call it execute seed. And uh, to make this simple, I'm just going to create an item ID and initialize it to one. <clears throat> and then we're going to create an array of ledger items and then post that to a context. And uh, that reminds me, I'm going to have to pass the context in. So we'll do multi UI data context called context. And then let's create our items array. Okay, and then we'll initialize our array using collection initialization with a bunch of new objects of type ledger item, and we'll set all the properties on them. So we're going to set the ID equal to item ID, and then we're going to increment item ID, <clears throat> and then we'll set the description to, uh, let's use string interpolation, transaction, I know this would be off by one, but I don't really care. So we'll use item ID for the transaction description. And then um, we need a transaction date. We'll do a new date time, 2019-11. And we'll just do something silly for the amount. We'll say 100 plus the item ID, just to make it interesting. And then we're going to create a whole bunch of these. Just copy them. And... It's fine that they're all the same. The item ID is going to change, but I need to change the transaction date on some of them so we can see the filtering work. So, well, let's do like half of them here. So we'll do some Februarys and some Marches. Fourteen won't work. Okay, <clears throat> we have our items created. We need to tell our context to put them into the right collection. So ledger items dot add range items. And then make sure we tell the context to save the data. Okay, so that's how we're going to seed our SQLite database. So we'll have a decent amount of items to see in our data grid when we build out the UI. Okay. This is a class library. Um, the data service is .NET Core. So we need to host it somewhere um, to get our routine to launch and seed the database. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this MVC Razor app. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is um, register the data service with the DI framework and then go in and create an instance and then we'll add some code to check to make sure that the database has been <clears throat> excuse me created and if it needs to be created we'll make sure that when it is created that we call the seed routine on it so let's start with uh, the dependency injection so let's go to startup <clears throat> this is where the dependency injection is set up and configure services is configuring our dependency injection services. And I am going to add services dot add transient of a multi UI. Uh, I'm going to add both the data context and the data service. Now, we really only want to use the data service, but we need 
one of our apps to call the seed um, method on an actual data context. So I'm going to do that in here. So let me see if we can get this resolved. And we need to add a reference and a using Visual Studio will take care of that for us. <clears throat> and then add another transient for the data service. Okay, great. So our two data uh, related services are now registered with the dependency injection framework. So what we need to do now is make sure that when this MVC Razor app, ASP.NET Core app is what this is targeting, when this fires up, we need some code somewhere to check and see if the database is created now that the context and the service are registered with the DI framework. So let's go to the program. And <clears throat> what we'll do here is we're going to have to sort of re-rig this create host builder. And um, this code's a little wonky, but we'll just walk through it. So rather than just running this, we're going to create a reference to the host that this create builder creates for us. We'll call build and create a reference to it. And then we're going to have some intermediate code, and then we're going to tell the host to run. And the intermediate code is what's wonky. So some of this DI terminology is a little hard to grok. So what we have to do is we have to create a scope factory first. Remember, dependency injection is all about scopes. Uh, the DI framework has to know what scope the objects that it creates should be created for. So we create a scope factory here and we'll do host.services.getRequiredService. <clears throat> I'm not sure why I don't get IntelliSense on this, but uh, it should resolve itself if you spell it right. And we want an iService scope factory. Okay, well, I know why it didn't resolve itself because I don't have the using statement in there. So I'll, I need to use the extensions.dependency injection. <clears throat> And uh, sorry, this is going to be the type. And invoke the method. Okay, so we have a scope factory now. Now that we have a scope factory, we need to actually create a scope. So what, what I'm trying to do here is, now that I have my data context registered with the dependency framework, I want to create an instance of it. So to do that, I create a scope factory, and then I use the scope factory to create a scope. And then we can create an instance. So using var scope uh, equals scope factory dot create scope. <clears throat> we'll create an instance of our context from the service provider. And we just need to pass in the type, which will be multi UI data context. <clears throat> okay, now we have a context. And all we need to do now is say if db.database.insure created. Uh, now, insure created, what that does is it checks to see if the, the database has been created. <clears throat> if it hasn't been, then it creates it, and it returns true if it if it actually created it. If it didn't create it, it would return false. So if it just created it, then we want to seed our database. So we'll execute seed, and we'll pass in our context. Okay, so that was a lot of work to get that set up, but um, <clears throat> we're injecting and we're using an instance from the... DI provider. So now if I save all this and I run an instance of this ASP.NET Core app, hopefully it's going to go ahead and uh, scaffold up a database for us. <clears throat> Let me bring my browser window so you guys can see this thing run. 
and yeah, there's our my directory, and there's multiui.db, which was just created and um, loaded with seed data. Hopefully, we can't see it yet, but I'm pretty sure it's in there. Okay, so we're good. Um, <clears throat> now, let's see, where do we want to go now? I guess we can, let's go ahead and do the WPF UI first. I think it's it's pretty easy, so let's go ahead and get that out of the way. What What is tricky about WPF, though, is most of the more recent frameworks, when you create a project, the templates for those projects create boilerplate scaffolding for dependency injection. Uh, sorry, I don't want to rename that. Um, WPF doesn't, so we can use dependency injection, but we're going to have to set up a lot of it on our own. So the way we'll do that is we'll tap into the startup uh, process for a WPF app. <clears throat> and we'll go to the app itself and we will override the on startup. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to have um, some of the dependency injection um, framework items, which what we're going to need is a service collection so that we can register our services. And we'll just call it service collection. And <clears throat> since this is a WPF app, we actually have to install the NuGet package for dependency injection. So I'll just go ahead and install the latest. <clears throat> and then we're also going to want to have a service provider, which I'll just name service provider. Okay, and then in the startup, we'll initialize those instances. So service collection equals new service collection. Come on. And then we'll start registering some of our services, and then we'll create the service provider. <clears throat> okay, so service collection dot... Um, let's see, what do we need to register? We need to register our data service. So let's create, uh, excuse me, uh, add, let's do singleton. We'll just create one instance. Um, this is a simple app. So one instance will be fine for what we need. <clears throat> and we want multi UI data service. We don't need the context at all now. Um, our server side project is initialized the database and all that. Uh, okay, we want to add a reference to our data service project. That's great. Okay, now <clears throat> our data service is registered um, with the dependency injection framework. And what we're going to want to do um, to build the UI and WPF is we're going to want to inject an instance of that into our main form. So to do that, uh, we have to do a little bit of adjusting. Now, the way WPF apps work by default is the startup window is specified by the startup UI URI in the applications YAML. So we don't want it to do that. We're going to want to create our own instance of our main window and use constructor injection to inject an instance of our data service so that we can show the data in the UI. Okay, so we've gotten rid of that. If we run our app now, it's not going to create a main window. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to register the main window as a singleton because we're only going to create one instance of it uh, with the service collection. <clears throat> and then I'm going to dig out a new instance of main window uh, once we build our service provider. So service provider. instance equals service collection dot build service provider. Okay. And then we'll call our on startup. <clears throat> and then after that, we'll create our main window instance. Uh, windows fine. I need to call it main window uh, by calling the service provider 
and telling it that we want it to give us a required service of type main window. <clears throat> In other words, create an instance for us. And then once we have the instance, we just say show. So we basically replaced the normal WPF startup, which is done in XAML, with this um, instance creation from dependency injection. Now, the reason I did all this is because we want to inject our data service into main window. So let's go to the constructor of main window. I'll hit F12, and then I'll go to the partial class that's editable for us. And then I'll add a constructor parameter for multi UI data service. And we'll just call it data service. Control dot to have Visual Studio help us out. <clears throat> okay, and what we're going to want to do is keep a reference to that. And Visual Studio has this nice new feature. You do control dot again, control dot. And then it'll either create a property for you or a field. I want to create a field from that constructor parameter. And then it actually inserts the line to assign it as well. So that's a nice little time saver. So now we have a reference to our data service. It should get injected if we start this app. And we will have a reference to it to actually use on our UI. So let's go ahead and build out the UI a little bit. Let's go to main window.xaml. <clears throat> and I'm just going to, this is really small. Let me see if I can increase this. I want to create some rows in this layout grid. There we go. And just, well, I'll just do an example. Okay, uh, so the row definitions, I don't want to use star sizing for all of them. I want two fixed rows, and I'll just make them both uh, 40. <clears throat> and then I want one row of star sizing to take up all the remaining space. So in this top row, I'm just going to add a title, and then here we're going to have our date picker and a button, and then we'll put our data grid down there. So let's go ahead and rip through some of that. Um, let's just do a label and we'll call this ledger report and we'll just do a little bit of amazing UI work here. So let's make it bold and increase the font a little bit. And then, uh, I guess we can really push the envelope and center it. Okay, <laughs> so now we have a label. Uh, we want to create a date picker. <clears throat> and we want to put that in grid row one. And we're going to have to put some fixed sizing on it so that it makes sense for our UI. Uh, sorry, we'll do width equals 120. And we'll do height equals 26. And then let's slide it to the left. And give it some margin. Okay, good enough. Now let's go ahead and create our button. <clears throat> and let's just say execute report. Report, report, okay, and uh, that's going to have to go in grid row one. And let's do a width of 120 and a height of 26. And uh, we'll just leave it right there, that's fine. And then we need a data grid. <clears throat> okay, and then, uh, oh, this one's got to go in grid row two. Okay, so there's our UI. Uh, we need to name some of these things so that we can get to them from code. Um, we're not going to actually create a, a detailed view model. Um, MVVM is a, is a great uh, architecture for WPF apps. Uh, I'm in complete favor of it, but I'm not going to use it here. I'm just going to create something simple so we can move on. Um, but I, I do want to name these so that I can access them from C Sharp. So we'll just call this 
date picker and I don't need a name for the button I don't think and the data grid I'll just call it data grid <clears throat> We'll double click that to create an event and hook it up for us. And then um, I don't want to do the code in here. I want to create a little helper to say execute report. That way we can call that same method when the form is created and it won't be empty. <clears throat> so inside of execute report, finally, we want to use our data service. So what we want to do is say data grid, which should be available now dot item source equals data service yes dot get ledger items nice <clears throat> now get ledger items if you remember it receives a parameter of our date filter and our date filter should be available from date picker dot selected date so when you click on a button, it'll call execute report. Execute report will call the data service, which was injected through constructor injection. And it will ask for the ledger items filtered by that date. If the date's null, you'll get all of the items. Uh, one last thing here. I want to execute report when the form is created so it doesn't start up empty. Okay, let's change our, well, we already have that as our starting app, so let's run it and see what we get. Uh, put my window over here so you guys can see it. And great, we have data, that's nice. <clears throat> so there's all of our items. Our seeding of the SQLite worked fine. Um, let's try the filter, 01, 01, 2019. Great, so that works. Uh, one more test, I guess, just for, all that work we did so that works and if we null it out again we should get everything okay great so nothing too revolutionary here um, but one down four to go right we, we built one UI sharing our using our data service we're going to build four more and see if they can all share that same data service as well all .NET stuff all different frameworks all in C sharp so WPF down um, we already have MVC Razor kind of running, so let, let's go ahead and tackle that one. So, <clears throat> uh, do we want to do the Razor page first, or do we want to do the, let's do the MVC first. So, um, let's start with the view. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the index that the scaffolding created for us, and I'm just going to use that, so I don't have to wire up a bunch of stuff that we already probably know how it works so this is the default index view um, and I'm just going to replace this with we, we need two things we just saw the WPF UI um, <clears throat> we need to recreate that here so basically we need a little form that will allow the user to set the date to be used and then we need the data grid to be displayed well, we're not going to use a data grid we're going to use a HTML table so let's create the form and we'll do method equals get because we're going to be getting a view and what i'm going to do to make this look somewhat nice is i'm going to nest a couple of divs and then we'll do some bootstrap um, <clears throat> so this one is going to be a, a class equals form group just to kind of keep things from stacking on top of each other give it at least a decent UI look and this one will be an input group okay and then in here we're going to want to have the same thing we did with WPF we're going to, want to have a date picker um, or a date input and a button <clears throat> so we'll do input type equals date and class equals form control and <clears throat> this step is important so we're going to want to be able to pass this date to our controller and the way i'm going to do that is by giving this input a specific name and a great name to use for filtering a date date filter 
So we'll do that. And there's our input for the date. And then we need our button to execute. So button and we'll do some bootstrap class refinement on that. We'll do, uh, we'll do button primary, I guess. <clears throat> and we'll say execute report. I think that's what we did for WPF. And there's our button. So um, now we also are going to need a table to show the results that we get back. Um, so what I'm going to do, well, before we create the table, uh, we're, we're going to need some data to put in the table. So we're going we're gonna to struggle unless we deal with that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a model for this. This is MVC, so we should have a model. And I'm going to go to our models folder and I'm going to create a class called index view model. <clears throat> and uh, super simple. All we're going to show is the results of our ledger items. So we'll create an I enumerable of ledger item. And we'll just call it ledger items. And we'll make that a property. Okay, so there's our very simple view model. We just need to get data that's going to be fed to us from this shared data service. Okay, so back to the view. Now let's build this table. Oh, let me say what model we're going to use. Uh, model is index view model. Cool. And I'm going to name this ledger report. And uh, let's go ahead and do an H1 up here. Why not? <clears throat> and this is the ASP.NET MVC version. Okay, now let's go ahead and get our table going. So, um, I'm trying to think, do we want to do our controller first and load the data, or do we want to do the view? Uh, let, let's go ahead and switch to the controller. It kind of just makes sense to, to do it that way. So, uh, the controller for our index page is the home controller. That's what the scaffolding gave us. And we're going to want this index controller right here. This is what's going to create our view. This is the endpoint that we're dealing with. But inside of here, we're going to want to get our data service, our shared data service, right? That's the whole point of this walkthrough. So I'm going to, I'm going to make this really easy. Uh, we should get a lot of help from Studio on this one. So multi UI data service <clears throat> control dot and give me that using and then call it data service and then let's visual studio do all the work and create a field for us and assign it and now we're good we're dependency injection we already registered it earlier that's how we did our um, seeding and creation of the database so it's already registered we just add a parameter the DI framework will take care of injecting it. Visual Studio just created the reference for us. We're great. So now in the index controller action is where we need to make sure we take care of creating our model for our view and providing data to that model. So we know we want to let the user filter by date. So I'm going to create a date time parameter. And remember we called it in the view, we gave it a name of date filter. So if we give the parameter that same name, then the parameter binding in ASP.NET MVC will take care of assigning that directly for us. So we should be good there. When the user enters a date and hits our endpoint, this should be assigned. So now all we have to do is create a model and pass it to our view. 
So I'm going to create a new index model, index view model. And then I am going to um, figure out which ledger items to assign to it. Actually, our data service takes care of it for us. All we have to do is pass in the parameter. If it's null, it will give us the whole collection. If it's got a value, it will give us filtered results. So our model is created. Pass that into our view, and we should be good. So, so there's our controller, and um, now we can go back and actually build our table in our view. I don't think we did that. So yeah, come back over here, and we'll create a table. And um, I'm not going to create a header and all that stuff. That's all kind of detail we're not too concerned about. So I'll do a for each of our item uh, in model dot ledger items. So we're iterating over all of the items, the ledger items that were returned from our data service. And we'll create a table row for each one. And then the columns we want to show will be, um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do the ID, I guess. And, oops. <clears throat> Good thing I don't care about that one. Uh, anyway, so we'll do the, we'll do the date, we'll do the description and do the amount. I think, I think that's all we had. <clears throat> okay. So we have a little table built out and, uh, let's see what happens if we run this guy. Let's set this guy as our startup and fire it off. <clears throat> Will it work? Okay, we got data. Uh, our table is not looking so hot. Um, let's see if our filter works and then we'll see if we can fix up our table formatting. Uh, okay, filter works. Uh, one more test for all our hard work. So everything looks good, um, but our table's not formatting. Let's just look at our view again. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so I forgot to tell Bootstrap to uh, format this as a table. So I think that should do it. <clears throat> yeah, okay, that looks better. And our filter, of course, still works. We didn't, we didn't change anything there. So um, there's quite a bit going on here. You know, we're, we're, create, we're taking input from the user sending that as a parameter it's binding because we gave it a name that matched our parameter name um, we're sharing that data service now between two of our ui frameworks we got wpf covered and we have asp.net core mvc covered as well so let's do razor page since it's in the same project uh why not <clears throat> okay uh now remember when we created this we didn't even have um, a template that would create both uh, MVC and Razor pages for us in the same project. So we're going to have to do some manually um, adjustment to add Razor pages. So we have add controllers with views being added as a service here. And what we're going to have to do, real simple, is add uh, Razor pages or pages <clears throat> okay and um, that does a lot for us but we need one more thing and that's down here in the endpoints we have to tell it that the endpoints should also honor razor pages as well so we say map razor pages and I think that's all we really need um, to start building Razor pages and ra razor pages are the same as ASP.NET Core MVC pages, um, just a little simplified. It kind of combines the controller with the model, um, and it works great for for simple scenarios. I, I think it's in this case it's going to be easier than the MVC view was. So um, by convention, what we need to do is add a folder called Pages. <clears throat> 
and then add a page here. So we'll do a new razor page. And let's call this, uh, let's call it ledger report. Okay, now let me be a little careful here. I do want it to generate a page model class. Um, if if I don't tell it which layout page to use, remember it didn't didn't get scaffold as a razor pages project. So it's gonna come up with no styling. It's not not gonna have the base layout page that has you know all of our references to our CSS. Um, so I do want to use layout page and I want to tell it which one to use. I want to use the same one that we had from MVC. So that's in views, shared, and layout. So we'll try this. And ledger report. So I think we're good. <clears throat> and that's spinning away. So still still going okay uh, so now we have our view and we have our model um, so like I said almost identical to MVC in fact what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy all of this <clears throat> into uh, not our model copy it all into our view and we'll change this to razor page version. <clears throat> oh, by the way, um, here's what that scaffolding did for us to tell it to use the layout, same layout we have for MVC. Uh, you have to have to have the tilde, tilde for relative pathing. And then uh, um, we should get the same styling with the bootstrap and all the CSS. Okay, so... Um, we don't have a controller this time um so how do we deal with getting data from um our data service okay so what we're gonna do is we're going to go to our model and as usual we're going to rely on constructor injection so i'm going to create a constructor <clears throat> and multi UI data service called data service and help me out visual studio and help me out again uh, yeah I'm like so lazy but studio is great so I have my data service now <clears throat> and you'll notice I have on get here so the way uh, the model works in razor pages is when the user interacts ra rather than interact with a the controller they'll interact with an on get method so instead of remember MVC I created a parameter a date time parameter called date filter <clears throat> on the controller this time I'm going to create that same thing on the on get and then uh, I need place to store uh, our data so I'll do a high enumerable a ledger item and just call ledger items <clears throat> so again this is kind of combining controller with model um, which I think is just fine for small use cases <clears throat> and we'll see it should work great for this small use case so this dot ledger items equals our data service not date date a service get ledger items and pass in the date filter <clears throat> okay and then now well, let's go back to our view and see what what do we need to fix there uh, actually, I think we're good. So um, <clears throat> model is our model. It's the class that we just created. And now it has a ledger items in it. So um, it just happened to work out great. 
same code that we had in the MVC version of the view. Uh, everything's referenced the same way. Okay, so let's try this out. Okay, and now we gotta navigate to that, and I called it ledger report. Okay, yeah, and there's the Razor page version, so we are on the right one, and we have all of our data, and will our filter work? <clears throat> yep, the filter works great. Okay, um, that's great. So three down, WPF, ASP.NET Core, MVC View, and ASP.NET Core, Razor View all working, all sharing the same data service. Now on to the hot new stuff, Blazor. <laughs> uh, I'm actually very excited about Blazor. So um, yeah, we'll get this going. Um, we'll start with the server. That's definitely going to be the easier of the two. And we're going to have to register our data service, but fortunately it's going to be really easy because we've kind of already been through this before. So, um, our service is up here, uh, after we do the server side blazer service, then we'll do services dot add, uh, transient <clears throat> multi UI data service and uh, Visual Studio to the rescue again it adds a reference it adds the using and then we just have to invoke that method and now the data service is registered with server-side blazer very cool um, I don't think there's anything else we need to change in here this is weather forecast services just from the templated sample app we're not even going to use it, but I don't want to break anything, so I'm, I'm going to leave it. Um, <clears throat> I think we're basically good with that. So now uh, let's do the same type of thing that we did with um, Razor and the MVC view. Let's just hijack the existing index from our Blazor server page. Uh, it's almost empty anyways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the mm, markup from our MVC view. I'll just use this because we're going to do something. I mean, Blazor is HTML based as well, running in the browser. So we're going to let me make sure I'm on the right Blazor server index razor. Yeah, that's it. So. Let me insert that markup here. <clears throat> and we don't need a hello world. ASP.net. Um, no, this is Blazor server side version. Okay, a, a couple things. Uh, Blazor is different. Um, yeah, it's HTML, but but we don't want to keep submitting a form request, or that's going to cause our page to refresh. So, uh, remember, server side Blazor is going to create a signal R connection to handle updating the UI. We don't want to keep refreshing the page over and over with server requests. It should all get handled for us um, by the Blazor component framework. So, so I'm not going to get rid of the form, but I'm going to keep the form elements, let me do control K, control D to reformat that. Okay, and then uh, we need some code here. <clears throat> so we'll do a code section. Uh, this is basically our model. And we know the models that we've used so far, we always need a date time for our filter. And we'll call it date filter. And then we need a I enumerable of ledger item. And we'll call it ledger items. Okay, and 
Trying to do control dot. Uh, I don't think so. This is this is new tooling, so that doesn't work. We'll have to manually add our using. Uh, see if I can handle this. <laughs> using um, UI multi UI dot D objects. Is it gonna like it? Yes. It finally went away. <laughs> so dependent on the tools. So. Sorry, you can ignore that. Okay, um, so we have our date filter, we have our I enumerable, that's basically our model. Um, what we need to do is hook up our button. Remember, we got rid of the form. The form in MVC and Razor page was submitting to the server, but we need to do something with our button here. Um, <clears throat> but with Blazor, really cool, we just interact with C Sharp. So I'm gonna do a, uh, on click event and I'm gonna bind that to um, I'm gonna make a new method called execute port very similar to some of the other frameworks that we've done and then I'm gonna implement execute port um, public void execute report and then inside of here <clears throat> we'll assign our ledger items. Ledger items equals data service. Um, oh, okay. So, so this is different. This is different than any of the other models we've done so far. We can't um, use constructor injection because we're not creating the instances of controllers or windows. But the way Blazor handles this is with a directive. And it's really easy. You just tell it, please inject a multi UI data service and call it multi, oh, sorry, just call it data service. And that's it. Um, that, that variable name becomes available to your C sharp. Data service dot um, okay, it doesn't know about this yet, so I, I do have to add the using. I think they'll probably get this tooling down better where it'll add all this stuff for you, like it does with the other frameworks. Um, I need data service namespace, and now it should be much happier. So dot get ledger items, and we need a date. We have it already on our model, so we just pass in date filter. So when they click on the button, it will execute the report. Now, we also want, we don't want to start with an empty page, so Blazor components have an on initialized that we can override. <clears throat> and again, the tooling is not quite 100%, so you have to manually add protected void and then in here, we just say execute report, which will execute with an empty date filter and show us all of our items. And we don't have a model, but we do have direct access to ledger items on our model. Um, okay, so let's try this guy out. We're, we're injecting our service um, in the startup, the data service. And then in our view, we give it the directive to inject an instance and call it data service and we get our data from that, assign it to our C sharp um, member ledger items. And then we use that in our markup. Um, okay, will it work? Let's find out. Let's set this to the startup and run. Sweet. So we're looking good for our startup. Let's try filter. Uh, that did not work. So um, we will have to figure out why that's not working. 
I think I know why I didn't I didn't bind it. So I have input type equals date. Now in the other frameworks we used a name to to um, bind to do parameter binding provided by MVC. We can't do that with Blazor. So what we have to do is we have to bind that. So the syntax is at bind uh, equals and then what you want to bind to. So we want to bind to date filter. This is two-way binding and let's just try it. So now when the user enters a date, it should update our backing property. 2019 and yeah we're filtered so cool okay so four down um i think we saved the best for last so just to review again wpf asp.net core mvc asp.net core razor pages and now Blazor server side. Okay, sorry about that, I stepped away, but uh, let's go ahead and finish this off. We have one more to go, and that's client side Blazor. It's gonna be the hardest of the bunch, but um, one thing's easy, and that is uh, server side and client side Blazor both share the same component model, so I'm just gonna take everything out of the server side index page, and I'm gonna paste it into the client side page. Didn't do my copy correctly there. Let's do it again. Control C and Control V. Okay, uh, now some of this isn't going to work. We cannot use the data service in client side uh, Blazor because it contains Entity Framework, which targets .NET Core 3. And you probably wouldn't want to use Entity Framework in a client side Blazor app anyway. So we, we have to get rid of that and we have to find a different way to get our data. We're gonna do that by making a request. So, so we're gonna to have to fix this up down here. This data service isn't gonna work in the client side Blazor. Um, but what we need to do is we need to build an endpoint that we can get our data from. So we're gonna do that by hosting a web API endpoint in our original MVC Razor app. So I'm going to go to controllers on that app and I'm going to add a new controller and it'll be empty and I'll just call it data. The controller okay and um, we're going to add a few attributes here so we'll let the framework know that, that this is an api controller and i'm going to change the routing to make it simple because this is hard enough as it is so i'll say route and the route that i'm going to use is just the controller name <clears throat> okay and then we're going to build one method to provide our data. Um, first though, we're gonna need the data service. So we'll inject that into our constructor. Um, multi UI data service, and call it data service. And we'll let Studio take care of that for us. And we'll let Studio take care of that for us. And now we have our data service accessible. And now we're going to create one method, which will be an HTTP get. And uh, we're going to return a enumerable of our ledger items. And let's do you take care of that as well. Okay, and then get, and then we're going to have to have our date parameter for filtering. So date time, date filter. <clears throat> and then uh, pretty simple, all we have to do is go to our data service and tell it to get the ledger items and we pass in the date filter. And we're good to go. Okay, so that is our endpoint and uh, just note, it's going to be accessible by typing in data. So let's try that out just to make sure that that works. <clears throat> Slash data. So we got data, so we're good. Now back to the client and to the index page. And so here is where we're going to have to make a request 
to the server and we want to do that by using an HTTP client. So we're going to ask the framework to please inject an HTTP client and call it HTTP client. And then down here we can say HTTP, well, this is going to be an async, so change my method signature and then do an await on the HTTP client dot get I need the other HTTP client, get JSON async. <clears throat> and we want to get back a array of ledger items. And we need to know what the endpoint is going to be. Um, so that endpoint is going to be the server name and data. Sorry, let me run this one more time and then I'll just copy it rather than having to type that port number and all that. Okay, so the full endpoint is that. And we will stop our app, back to our client. And that's the endpoint we want to hit. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and change our startup projects because we have to run two now. So set startup projects to multiple. And uh, we have MVC Razor and Blazor Client. So actually we're good to go on this. If I start this now, <clears throat> it's going to start both the server and the client. So we'll see what we get here. So the data service is running. This is the server. This is the client. And you can see the, the client is not working, right? So uh, debugging client side blazer is not the funnest thing in the world. Um, let's go ahead and clear that console. Uh, okay, something else is going on. I don't think it's even getting to this request. Um, okay, I know what this is. This is, uh, I'm doing a for each on this ledger items, but it's null. So it's crashing on the client. And there's a few ways to handle it. I could just initialize it, but I'm just going to use some razor and switch to C sharp and say if ledger items not equal to null, then render the table. Otherwise, don't render the table and crash because it's null. And then I'll do control, K, control D to fix it up and then uh, see if we get a little farther this time. So it's launching uh, server and client again. Uh, that's the server. Okay, so our client loads, but um, we're not getting data and we hit F12, and then I clear this, and then fetch again. Then we see um, the issue is this uh, cross-origin resource sharing issue. So I'm requesting data from 62816 to 443340, and the security between the browser and the server is preventing it. So I need to enable cores to relax that security and allow this request to go through. So let's go ahead and fix that up. And this is all done from the server side. So we go to the server startup and what we wanna do is configure um, CORS service. So we do services.addCORS <clears throat> and this is uh, pretty sloppy here, but what? We have to do is build a lambda and from inside of there we, we need a, a course policy builder so we say options dot add policy and then we give it a name here and I'm just going to call it course policy and then here's the policy builder um, 
And what we do is we say with, uh, sorry, um, builder dot with origins. And then we give it the origins that we want the server to allow um, requests to come in from. So if I remember right, it's HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon six two eight one six. That was our client, our Blazor client's um, port number that is running under IIS Express. And then, um, you know, I need all the help I can get trying to get these semicolons and parentheses to line up. So let's see, I need that. And then I need that and that. Did we get it? No. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's see. Options, add policy, open paren. Builder goes to builder with origin. Um, what am I missing here? Um, uh, these are reversed. Okay, so there's our policy, and then, um, no, I still don't have this right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, now we have our policy, and then down here we need to use that policy. Um, and we do that after the authorizations where I'm going to put it and uh, use course and then we, we get it by the policy name. And so I'm just hard coding this course policy. So now this is telling um, the server to go ahead and allow requests coming from this client. And so now let's go ahead and run it and see if we get any data in client side blazer. Okay, uh, we got data. Uh, let's try the filter. And that does not work. And uh, it doesn't surprise me, I know why. So let's go and fix that. That'll be the last thing and we'll be done. We'll have all five working. So we go back to our page. And the reason not working is that we're just uh, fetching data from that endpoint. But we're not, um, <clears throat> we're not using the date filter. So here, what I want to do is build a custom request string. So I'll say request string equals uh, what I have now. And I'll change this to request string. Okay, and but if uh, the date filter is not equal to null, then augment the request string and add a URL type um, query parameter. So we'll say date filter equals, and then we'll just manually add it for this case so we can wrap this up. Um, we gotta check for null dot to string, and we want uh, y, 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 mm dash dd. Okay, so how it should pass the date filter if there is one. So we'll cross our fingers. Hopefully this will be the last run and we'll have a nice sample of five UIs. Uh, sorry, I don't know why it's asking me to restore pages. Um, if I execute this, get my data. One, 2019. I already know I forgot one thing, but we'll fix that. Um, if I do the filter, okay, so the filter's working, but it's one step behind. You saw that um, if I change this date and change it to 03, 01, 
come on, date component. <laughs> no. 0301-2019. Oh, boy. 0301-2019. If I click the button, it's basically one step behind. The filter's working, but um, the UI is not refreshing to reflect it. And there's a thing in client-side Blazor, actually in both, that sometimes you have to tell it when the UI is, uh, needs to be refreshed. So um, down here where we're requesting the data from the server afterwards, we're just gonna call state has changed. And uh, now we should be good to go. And there you have it. Um, we'll let it run and, and prove that it finally works. But we have five UIs all using the same .NET created data service. Uh, pretty cool. So let's just double check this. 0101 2019 and filter. And there we go. All right. So thanks for watching, guys. It was a little rough in some places, but kind of interesting. You got to see uh, Entity Framework with SQLite, uh, seeding a database, doing a lot of dependency injection, Blazor, cores, um, some pretty good stuff to know for enterprise development. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.